Hello everybody. This time I would like to model the rim of a BMW race car. <clears throat> As you can see I already did it once and I had several areas with problems. The first one was I used 128 sides for the outer ring because it must be a multiple of 16 and as it turned out this was not enough because the supporting edges uh, were too far away and I got some strange pinching in this area when I did the render. Then the next problem was uh, the worst really. I will only model one of these twin spokes and then radial array it and the radial array did not work at all and I will show you why and what I think I can do against it. So let's get rid of this, go to new mesh and see the backdrop item. This is the wheel I have uh, made it 50% transparent and I rotated it slightly so that the y-axis goes directly through the middle of this spoke. So let's start. I go to uh, wireframe and the first thing to think about is we have five holes in here we have five screws in here and we have eight double spokes around here so this first middle ring must be something which is a multiple of five and eight so it seems uh, 40 is a good number so let's start with a circle with 40 sides I bring it in directly from here about maybe 110 to 110 and put it in the middle. Uh, this is not the 100% uh, good photograph but it will be good enough to give us the right proportions. So I go to polygon mode, select this polygon, B for bevel, bevel it in, mm, a bit it doesn't really matter and delete this. Next I go and make the outer ring, so select the cylinder again and I use this time 160 edges as I said the first time I did 128. I could also 144 but I think I want to be on the safe side with 160. So I bring this out from the middle also about to here yeah 330 by 330 millimeters and all zero here. Drop the tool then I select this new polygon, B for bevel, bevel it in about to here and delete. OK, now we can start modeling the spokes. I start with some edges here. Then set key, click in here, bring it up to about here, R to straighten it and make it shorter, set again to about here or make it a bit wider again. Maybe I should bring this one down a bit more, W, like so, R, so we get a nice round shape. This one again, set, bring it up to here, 
R key. Make it wider, like so. Drop the tool, select the middle tool, R key again, and make it about so. Good. Now we can bridge these, this one, bridge, and do the same here, and bridge. Uh, okay, now I think I go to symmetry over the X and before I continue I align, no, no, first I put in an edge here because there is a lip around this and the second one here and now I go to vertex select uh, these vertices here, these four, and go to align without the uniform checked and click OK. And this is now a nice straight line. Next I use these here. Sorry align and OK. By the way, it matters in what sequence you select the vertices because <coughs> uh, the first and the last one you select determine in what direction the whole series of words will be aligned. OK. Now I don't need this backdrop item. Go to perspective, back to OpenGL. Now I can go to polygon mode, shift X, and go out of symmetry. And move this out, minus 25 is good, but this should be zero like so. Drop the tool. Just to be on the safe side, I run the mesh cleanup. Yeah, no problem. Good. Now I can select this loop here, then select all these polygons and this one and this one. Shift X again and bring this out uh, maybe two millimeters. Drop the tool, deselect these two polygons, W key, and bring it out further, maybe another five millimeters, like so. Drop the tool. Next I go and select all these edges and W key, move them out maybe 50 millimeters, 15, sorry, like so. Drop the two. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, that looks not so bad. Good. Now back to uh, back to symmetry again. And then I select these vertices and these ones and go to align again to make this a straight line. Do the same here. Align like so. Now this looks not so bad. Next we can bring this edge here a bit to the back, W key, about so. 
Yes, good. And now we are continuing on the back. So I select this L key, shift up, arrow and delete. Mm, I could have made this one as well. L key, shift X, bring this out maybe five millimeters, drop the tool, then I can delete this edge here. Yes, good. Now I select all these edges, set key, and then bring this back by maybe mm, minus 25 millimeters. Shift click, do this again. Yeah, minus 30, it's okay. Then press the R key, go to the front view, show the backdrop, and let's see how far we have to bring this in uh, on the blue circle. And you see here, these are these LED weights, which make sure that the wheel spins without vibrations. So this must be the inner part of the rim. So I bring this to here. Good. No need for the backdrop. Perspective. Set key again and bring this back another 30 millimeters. Doesn't matter. Okay. Drop the tool. Now we can select this uh, loop and this one and this one L key control X control V now it's separate control copy control V now we have it duplicated go to the back view R key and bring this out yeah that's good by 2.5% perspective again and flip and before I continue I want to uh, merge the vertices which I have unmerged before so I don't get problems later so vertex merge automatic okay 160 have merged that's good now I can connect these here and bring this one W closer to here. That's good. Yes. <clears throat> um, next, I go to front view again and show the grid. Go to polygon mode and select everything here. Control X, Control V. I can delete this middle part. Select this one. E for rotate, but action center origin. And then Control rotate this 180 degrees. Go to top view. Control rotate it again. Like so. W key and bring it back to about here. Good. Now, the easiest way would be if we could simply put these edges together and merge the vertices. R key. Ah, sorry. Action center modo default. But as you see, we have sometimes pretty big overlaps. We could try.
try to do a vertex merge with a rather big fixed amount, like maybe f oh, four millimeters. Let's see. Yeah, has worked. 162, that's not good. Should be only 160. But anyway, it looks right. Then we can delete this edge in top view, select it and backspace delete. Good. OK, now let's go to the next problem area I had. The problem is, if you see here, we have vertices which are shared by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 edges. And they are directly on the edge. And as you know from previous videos from me, this will cause uh, this will cause render problems. So I want to bevel this. <coughs> Select uh, this one first, L key, these, these two, and B for bevel, and bevel this in a bit. And this is when the problem came up, the problem with the radial array and the later merging. As you see, we need uh, 40 sides for the inner ring, which means if we want to do it eight times, we need five segments here. And what I did was I cut through here and I cut through here. And these edges here, they are completely straight and these were not straight at all which means they didn't merge at all and this is what I want to try to fix now. So I go to the back view, uh, select all these edges but with symmetry over the set <clears throat> and then go to action center element and can then press the R key and select this element here and bring them down to zero. Now they are straight and what I can do now is put a temporary edge in here, Alt-C, with a count of one and then we can delete this and hope that next time this will merge without too much problems. Sorry, one too little. Now it's good. On top here we need uh, we need 20 segments because we have 160 times 8. Uh, 8 times 20 makes it right, so I want to have at least one good one here. So I select these two, but without symmetry. L key, delete, delete this here. And next we can go to 1, 2, 18, 19, 20. Now we know where we have to cut through here. L key, delete, delete this one. And now we need to connect these spokes here a bit more to the rim. And Okay, I think the easiest way is if we go to symmetry on the X and 
we must move these polygons out of the way first. So actually only this edge down here, select this edge, W with action center element, select this and move it away like so. Front view again, yes. And now I think it's easiest if we only have what we really need, which are these three polygons, and then shift H the rest, hide the rest, go to front view, then we can select uh, these edges here, W key, that action center uh, selection, and move it to the middle here, like so. Unhide everything, and I think this should have done the trick. I don't think that this will be visible when we do the render, not when we have 128 edges and do some additional hardening. So let's... Um, well, actually I could move this edge back a bit, only these ones. W key, action center, element. Yeah, and move them to the middle. Good. Okay, next I go to front view again and we need to have uh, two cuts in here and I make this with shift C and cut through here. Good, drop the tool, then uh, no, I undo this and first put in two edges here, hold C, count of two, at about two percent, mm -hmm. and now I cut the edge in, shift C, cut through here, good, okay, now let's see, we have where well, we could tweak these vertices a little bit. So let's do that. W and action center element still. This one and move it up a bit like so. That's good. Because the spokes will come in here and we won't see this. So let's uh, see, I have an edge in here, then I need one in here as well. About so, then I can select this, one, two, three, four, five, delete these, and then go to edge mode, select these edges, deselect the top two, and bridge this together. And now we have one segment almost completed. Next I will do some edge hardening. So I select a loop around here and I don't think I want to have one in here and not in here and not this one. Now let's see what we get. Alt C, count of two, symmetry, click in the viewport and make this about five percent. That's good. Drop the tool, deselect everything. Let's see. This one is maybe one too many, so delete it. And if we subdivide it, it looks pretty nice. 
there are some edges which we don't need. So delete these. The rest looks good. OK, now let's radial array this. Uh, go to duplicate, radial array, count of 8 around the set. Merge vertices, which will not work. Uh, action center origin. O, 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 make symmetry off and click in the viewport. And let's see, run mesh cleanup. We have merged 570, that's a strange number. And as you can see here on these arrows which point to the area of problems we don't have merged. But we can do this uh, manually because this is a very, very tiny distance. So vertex merge uh, 0.1 millimeters. OK, and 8 have merged. That's good. Good. Now, I select this, L key and delete, and, uh, oops, before I forget, select an edge in here, and one in here, up arrow key, L key, and backspace, delete these temporary edges. And as I said, I already modeled this part and I'm not going to do the inner part because that's pretty easy and there are quite a few of my uh, tutorials like in the 2D to 3D series or the electromotor which describe these modeling techniques. So I will just copy this inner part, control copy and put it in my new mesh, control V, go out of sub D mode and before I continue I will give the rest a material, namely rim, and then we can just connect these together or uh, bridge these together and then go to sub D mode and our spoke is finished. And if I bring back the backdrop item, then we can see that this looks pretty much like the real thing. So let's render it. Uh, no backdrop, but we need to see this one. Go to the Render tab and Turn off the eye on this material. I also did a BMW logo, which was uh, quite easy to do, but it obviously disturbs the rest. So let's have a look at the UV maps. So UV, yeah, that's not what we want. Edit UVs, delete UVs. Does it work? Ah, that's a problem. Edit UVs delete UVs. Now I can go to select this middle, poly, shift, up arrow once and UV projection tool and I have taken Atlas. This works best. Cubic also works but I think Atlas is the best one. So click here and now it should be OK. And I use another layout, maybe this one, and render this. And this is it. And you see it looks pretty nice and all the problems I had in my first model have disappeared. It looks nice. So, thanks very much for watching, take care 
and have fun modeling with Modo. By the way, if you have a question or something is not clear, please post it in the comments. Thanks again and bye bye.